Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and we're back here with Sim Airport in my recreation of Bristol Airport here in the UK. So I had planned to finish off or at least continue and actually start putting stuff on the first floor of our airport after I laid down the foundations in the last episode and sort of sketched out roughly where what I wanted to go where. But... You may recall, if you watched the last episode, I made mention of the fact that we were kind of due an update to the game sometime in the next few weeks. Now, I don't know whether it's because I'm psychic, as opposed to psychotic, that is, obviously, um, or whether there are some developers that watch my videos and think to themselves, Hey, up, let's see if we can mess with this guy's mind. Well, yeah, would you, would you believe it? Just a few days after that last episode was, was recorded, LV Game Dev released an update to Sim Airport, and it included a number of really rather fun features. So what we're going to do, to start this episode at least, is to have a look at those and uh, see if we understand them and what they may mean for the develop development of our airport. Now the first one, which is really nice to see, is gate control. Now you may recall that we already had gate control in the game. Uh, we just need to do this research here, gate control here, and that gives us a new option. Well, it enables an option here on our configuration control screen here called gate control. Now, all we had on this page before was the ability to set a closing time for each of our, our gate agent desks. So that 20 minutes before the flight is due to leave, the gate agents will close the desk and every passenger must be boarded by that time. And that helped me get around the problem we had with remote gates, where passengers were just leaving it so late that the airport bus... Uh, never got to the plane on time. So the plane never took off or took off with nobody on board. They've enhanced that and fine-tuned it. You can still do it like we did back then. But what they allow us to do now in this new update is to actually control the gate close time for different gates. Nice. So the main thing I'm concerned here with, obviously, is these remote gates up here, which are served by apron buses from here, from here, and also this one up here by the by, uh, because I couldn't fit another one down there, basically. <laughs> so this one here isn't too much of an issue. Uh, which gate is that connected to? That one. So I could leave that one um, with a short close time on it, but I want to make them all the same. Uh, and they can be different to these small gates here, which are connected directly into our departure corridor which, which is what I'm calling this space now I've decided so what do we do in gate control then what you can do is you can set up a number of different policies for different sets of gates around your airport so obviously if you've got a huge international hub airport with gates strewn across the map you can have different policies depending on how long it takes passengers to get there so I'm just going to create two here one for my remote gates and one for my sort of small gates connected to the airport. Now, there's a slight issue with this. Um, uh, we'll come to that in a moment, actually. <laughs> so I'm going to call this my one, my remote uh, B stands, if I could spell it correctly. Because uh, that's the those are the B gates up there. Those up there, they're all B stands. So we'll create this new uh, gate control policy, and the details of that is going to be closure time 20 minutes which is what we found worked best for these remote gates we're going to add in this is going to control now i'm not quite sure why they're in this particular order maybe it's the order i built them in or i i've no idea really i'm just making guesses here so gate b1 gate b2 and gate b3 and you can take them off here, this list, if you wanted to, just by clicking that minus sign there. But I want to put B1 back on, because obviously... Right, so if I now apply these changes, then that, edit that policy, remote B stands, will apply to those gates. One little issue here, it's only a sort of a cosmetic thing, but if we go into here, we can change the name of this to, say, remote stands apply those changes 
and the name here stays. Now, to be honest, I've not tried logging out and logging back in again to see if it is just a sort of data refresh issue. But um, so if you want to give the, your policies a name, get the name right to start with. I mean, it's what we always used to say back when I used to do proper work. We had the, one of our quality assurance messages was get it right first time. Yes. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that I always found that difficult. Anyway, so we'll call these. Ah, uh, um, well, what should we call this one? Small A stands, shall we? Uh, yeah, that will do. This new policy, we'll make this one just fifteen, perhaps. That might be enough. I've never had a problem really with the small gates, so uh, that's fine. So A two, uh, A one, and A three and apply those changes. Um, now the legacy here is because I already had um, gates running that 20 minute schedule that we had to start with in the previous episodes. Uh, so that was just a sort of carryover from the old version of the game, which is nice. Now once you've got the policies set up, as we had on that gate control screen, you can actually on individual gates, if we click on, cl whoops, click on a gate here, we can see here we can assign whichever gate policy we want to that stand. So you don't need to go through the faff of going through that big list and scrolling down to find the gate. Just find the gate on the map and then just pick the policy that's appropriate to it. So you can do that from there. And that should work really nicely. So I should now actually be able, should now be able to go in here uh, into my gate controls here and delete that. I hope that works. <laughs> uh, default is just a default. You can't get rid of this. It is always going to be there on the on the list, but uh, you could set that as a default, perhaps. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. So that's a, that's a nice new feature of the June the first update to the game. Now the other one, which I really like for Bristol Airport, and is something that's been on the Steam forums discussion for ages since this game was been in uh, early access for, for quite a couple of, well, quite, I'm not sure how many, three years, two years, quite a long time anyway, it seems. A lot of things people ask for is things like hotels and car parks. We don't have hotels, but we do now have car parks. Now, as I've mentioned before throughout this series, Brist Bristol Airport, and I'm sure this is true of many airports, make a huge amount of money from car parking fees. And now you, running a sim airport, can do just the same thing. So I don't want to mess around too much with this because it needs road building. And as we know, roads are a bit expensive and I'm a bit short of money at the moment. <laughs> I started this a few episodes ago with 8 million and I'm down to half a million and that's with taking out a large loan as well. So we don't want to spend too much money that, uh, that uh, we won't recoup fairly quickly. So the thing to, I, I think is good to do here is to work out where the roads go because that will impact on where you can put your car parking stands. So the roads here, see, see I, I can't, they always go in, in this one block here. So I can't put it sort of on that junction between the gray and the cyan color. So they have to be in that particular position. The thing, and the thing to remember when putting in car parks is that cars need to come into the car park and they need to be able to get out of the car park. So you will need roads which go round the car park area. So you need an entrance and an exit. So which is why we've got this here. I found when I put just one road in, cars got stuck and that just wastes money and makes people late for their flights. So if we draw some road along here, like so, and just turn it down here like so, and then out there like that, and we can find in objects, structures, a car parking lot, and you place one lot at a time and each one costs you 750, which doesn't seem like a lot to start with. But if you're building a, an airport car park, then you're going to need hundreds, uh, thousands of these, if you're being in any sense realistic. But there you are. Right, so uh, we want this to face the road, so you can see where the white line isn't. So that's facing the road, and we'll place 
just a few of these, in fact, along there. I will, this will extend probably to cover most of this area, to be honest, but that will do for now. Now, you can actually set the price of a car park space. Uh, it's, where is that set? Uh, it's not set there. Commercial pricing, no. We will see that in a moment. I haven't, I haven't actually worked, perhaps I should have done that before I started recording this, is where do you set the car park space price? Uh, good question. And you don't need to zone it as far as I can make out. You just place it down and people will come and use it. Uh, while we're waiting for them to build that, let's just check our airport. Yep, we're getting away smoothly, efficiently. I like this. And we are currently, yeah, $54,000 in the red. Yeah, we, we will make that up, I hope. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's all that road, you see. It's, it's just extortionate. Right, let's get them building that, and I'll be back with you once they've finished all... Oh, they probably have, actually, because there's a car park there already. It's just my planning zone colour confusing me. So let's get rid of that. And there we are. A car has parked. Ah, oh, here we can set the pricing. Ah, now, is that... If I set that pricing at, say... Eleven, eleven dollars. It'd be nice if you could click into that and just type it rather than try to manhandle the mouse. So that's eleven. Oh, it sets it all for all of them. That's good. Okay. Now, what will happen is that anyone arriving by car uh, will park in the nearest spot they can to the door in which they need to enter the airport. Now mine is quite close. Um, ish. <laughs> it is quite a walk. I will of course properly pave this and make it a pleasant experience as well uh, when they come to walk into the airport there. Uh, as far as I'm aware um, there, are, there, are, there certainly are at the moment, moment no shuttle buses from any car parks to get people quickly to the terminal uh, and I don't know if that's on the uh, on the schedule for for the for a future update i could go back and check perhaps on that now what you'll see as we see there oh why why were you doing hang on let, let's just stop this guy here you're you're a pilot or a flight attendant you are your arrival you're looking for a cafe so why were you going to the car park hmm yeah actually so what happens is arriving passengers uh, will park their car here and leave it there and it will then be taken by uh, sorry, departing passengers will leave their car there and arriving passengers will take a car out of here to drive home again so it's kind of like a car hire thing yeah you hire a car to get to the airport and then someone else hires it to drive home well it's a, it's a logic isn't it so that's that's the way it works uh, now, there was also, in this update, mention of a new notification system, uh, which I'm not seeing here. Uh, does it... where's the gameplay? Uh, no, 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 no. Random events. No. Oh! I will turn that on. Uh, sorry, I had a, kind of assumed it was on automatically, but uh, it's not. Okay, I'm not seeing notifications, but there there is a new, not, an improved notification system, uh, which uh, we might see uh, when something interesting happens, perhaps. But anyway, that's that's it for the latest update. Uh, there are all sorts of other improvements, bug fixes, and other sort of quality of life updates, as well as improvements to the modding system as well. Uh, and talking of which, I have added a few more mods into the game which you may see in use today but probably not to be honest uh, all the mods I'm using uh, will be listed in the Steam collection uh, which I will create a link to or add a link to in the description below right everything is looking really smooth at the moment yep I was there already P oh we're already in profit excellent 
Okay, so... Uh, now, in this next part of the video, I've got an admission to make. I have cheated a little bit. You may remember, towards the end of the last episode, we built this foundation up here. And I had placed in some stairs and a few security gates, so I go up, and stuff. Uh, to just sort of get some idea of the scale of this first floor. And I mentioned in that episode that, oh, there's a risk that some passengers might come up here and before going to, to meet their aeroplane. And some passengers did. And that caused them to be late, so I lost the perfect ops bonus. And I just got very annoyed about that. But then I realised that actually, this, the, the stairs that are place which were down here I think near the baggage claim area down here somewhere were actually a bit too close to the end of the terminal building uh, if I'm trying to recreate how Bristol Airport works so if I remember I will try and get that photograph or sorry that that uh, diagram of the airport on the screen now as well while we're talking about this so what we have on the first floor down here is the security area with actually a separate area for priority or fast track security it calls it so what i'm going to do there is i'm going to make one area here sort of first class security only and the rest of this can be coach and um airline staff and all the rest of it uh, so they will go through that security those security gates there a bit further away basically from the lovely shops and restaurants that will populate the rest of this space uh, so I've moved those stairs back a little bit so I could got more room here for security and so on so what we're going to have here we're going to have some toilets down this end I've marked out where I think the stairs should go this of course is all likely to change uh, we, the departure lounge will be mostly seating through the center here and we'll have our shops off all the way up here um, with more toilets and stuff at this far end of the building so oh, we're making a fair amount of money now so let's uh, see how much more let's get the toilets in shall we that's always important um, now I'm thinking we might actually have three sets of toilets in here but yeah let's get those built and that across there and across there and we'll need some doors some doors now actually I've got a new mod full of doors in here yes all sorts of different colors uh, I could be very gender specific uh, have we got a pink door we don't have a okay mr. modder sir oh no, it's called pink it is I say, a very bright pink isn't it yeah, I was reading that as magenta, but it's not magenta at all. It's, it's, it's yeah, so we could have pink and blue, just using old-fashioned gender stereotypes. <laughs> um, yeah, and all sorts of other different glass doors and so on, uh, labelled as first-class crew lounges and stuff. Again, it just adds that extra flavour to the game. So we will put uh, the male toilets in there, the female toilets down there. Shall we zone these? A male. Apparently, we have to call them restrooms. So I can go in there. And let's put in some objects like. Uh, it's a comfort, isn't it? Yeah. We'll, we'll all have toilet stalls. Although the urinals are a little bit cheaper. Oh, actually, no. 1200? Gosh. Okay, right. <laughs> that is very expensive. I wasn't expecting it to cost that much. So we'll have one, two, three, four to start with. And we'll do the same in the in the gents. No, actually, no, we won't. Which I just need to cancel that operation. Because I want to face the other direction, of course. Uh, where are we? Comfort. There we go. So they go in there, and an uh, equal number of sinks. There we 
Okay, that's done there. So I can take that planning away. Yeah, that will do. Uh, oh, you're waiting for the sinks to be built, I think, aren't you? That's. Oh, no. Yeah, it's not accessible because I've blocked off the stairs down here. Yeah, there's a wall around them so people can't get up them. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to want a shopping area up here as well. Uh, where's that going to be? I think... Is there a certain size for a store? Minimum, minimum of 5x5. Five five. So we could... Place that. I want it to be fairly big, I think. Let's start with that. See if that works. Okay. Now, what do we want in a shop? Retail. And we're going to need in here. Uh, this will be the general duty free shop. Now, actually, there is. A, did I get this in here? There is a duty free door. As you can see, it says duty free on it. Uh, so the trouble is, I tend to keep my stores open. So having a door there is a bit silly, really, isn't it? So it's not going to be behind a wall. So no. So yep, yeah, that's another mod. Um, so you, well, you've seen it. <laughs> so it is just a door. It's just labelling of an area, which is fine. Uh, oh, we're doing very well. It's seven o'clock in the evening, and we've nearly 600,000. It's very good indeed. Uh, so, retail. I was going into retail. So we're going to need a cash register. You need to be within the zone. I think we'll have you... How much are you? A thousand. Gosh. Let's have... two of you, I think, to start with. And what should we have up here? What should we sell in our duty free? We'll have books. Have a number of uh, book stands along there. And we'll have a different book display. Um, along there and there and we will sell clothes yeah gonna have the game pause for a moment because it's gonna start prompting me to add staff and schedule them and stuff but I don't want to do just yet so let's get some clothes in here we'll have a variety of clothes like that uh, we'll stick the candy, well, the sweet dispensary, I think close to the cash desks. That's too close though, isn't it? If we put you there and there. Well, what else have we got? That's clothes, uh, jewellery. Yep, yeah, we need jewellery. So we'll put some jewellery stands along here, and different jewellery stands. Is there a front and a back? Uh, uh, right, okay, there is. Have I got that one the right way around? I don't know. Let's just try that again. Uh, where's jewellery? There you are. Right, that's better, I think. Uh, and obviously, makeup. Yeah, people definitely want makeup. We will put. Uh, ooh, we'll put you in. How much makeup do people want, do you think? 
Just one of those, and we'll have two of those. Pharmacy, yeah. We need, it's, I, mm, not sure we need a store quite that big, but we'll deal with it like that for now. Uh, pharmacy. There we go. We'll have a couple of you, and we'll also have this one. you. Why oh, putting them too close together? I, I tend to do that. I tend to make things either too far apart or too close together and I, I never quite get it right. <laughs> a shoe display. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll stick uh, one like that and one like that and we'll have you on, nope, the other one on the wall like that. Everyone loves souvenirs most definitely. So we need a good selection of souvenirs, like so. Uh, anything else we can stick in there? No, I think that's okay for the shop. Yep, that's fine. Okay, let's just check our staff schedule. So you are retail staff up here, and we do not want any of you no, right click during where are we evening or EAM or daytime or indeed early right okay that's looking quite good actually uh, the slight issue we're going to have is I'm going to be charged to fill all these up at 11 o'clock tonight so in about three hours time I'm going to lose a good chunk of money by having those shelves stocked okay uh, we should perhaps have someone up here in security mm, okay that's actually what I could do I could clone this uh, security area here and stick you uh, roughly there okay and we're going to need a remote uh, ops we're going to remote need the remote control desk there you go and we'll stick you in mm, there I think Okay, let's get the guys building. People are using our car park. Are we making money out of it though? That's the question. And car parking uh, income comes here under transportation. Parking, nearly two and a half grand already. That's a nice little income, isn't it? No wonder airports put so much money into building a car park. So, oh, go on Adrian, put some more car parking in. You know you want to. What do you mean invalid placement? No. Oh, because I'm on the. F <laughs> okay. Uh, note to developers: uh, quite a few of your other assets do warn you when you're on the wrong floor. That's what the problem here is. I'm actually on floor two here. You can see, I need to be on the ground floor to place car parking spots. Actually, I wonder, whoops, go up, uh, you can, yeah, I, I've, I'd read in notes that you can place car parks underground, which is obviously where a lot of people would have their car parking, but you can place them on any foundation. So I could place them on floor two. Could you have a multi-storey car park? Now there's an interesting idea. And we'll put uh, a couple more of you in and that will fill that little space up. That's very nice. And so far today, even having spent $165,000 on materials for all this building, I'm over 100000 in profit. <gasps> I'm loving this. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Definitely. And the shop here is taking place. I will spend a vast amount of money on flooring. 
that is most definitely true and we will spend that when we need to actually while we're here actually the flights are probably just all finished now haven't they yeah they've all finished if we just check 132 people got away there on our TUI flight to some exotic holiday location 126 yeah, TUI are giving us loads of good flights by which I mean of course big <laughs> full of passengers uh, that, I'm yep yeah, that looks like we should be in line quick scan for another perfect operations bonus for today right steps down we're going to need steps down into the I was going to call it the <laughs> I'll get the word out right in a second I was going to call it the uh, evacuation corridor not the excavation corridor no <laughs> this is the <laughs> departure and arrival corridor so we need now if I put stairs in here now the trouble is people will want to come up them so I'm going to need to put in some wall first to make sure they don't and the best place I think for the wall here for the time being will be here so the stairs will actually go uh, let me just find stairs Uh, what I'm thinking of is if they go that way round or if we do them that way and that way then there's this single space in between for people to come out I'm just wondering is that too close because we're looking here let's go stairways up so if we if I put them like that like that that's how I was kind of thinking of them because that way they're kind of closer to the gates but if I place them then it's coming down here there's going to be that fight for space perhaps I do need a, a little extra space actually so maybe that's what we'll do maybe I'll yes I'll extend the uh, the planning zone here just let's, let's get this uh, it's probably orange isn't it is it orange yes so if we do it like that is that yellow yes that makes it easier we'll we would probably get away with a single space in there but it just looks it will look very crowded and that may actually that may actually impact on the uh, throughput of the passengers okay so let's get these oh I want a wall to start with didn't I uh, yes I did so we'll put the wall um, can I put it this close to the stairs we will see but the problem will be that I think the passengers will still try and come up these stairs when I build them but uh, they will hopefully quickly realize there's nothing up there so they will then come straight back down again and not miss their flights oh heck that's that's not good we've lost 11 grand okay uh retailing uh, how much is this I'm just mm, mm. I'm I'm not sure if this is all no that can't be all the all the goodies no there's no inventory there yet well we we shall see ah no they are full up now yes so looking at the uh, that well that would be yesterday was it yesterday uh, retail presumably so oh, I'm not seeing it there it wasn't today surely oh yeah it looks like it was <laughs> yeah there it is yeah so basically nine grand ten grand to uh, 
to stock these little key, these little desks here, these uh, shelving units. Uh, but hopefully we'll earn money on that. Uh, right, so where are we? We've got the wall built. Can I put my stairs in? So stairway down. Uh, yes. Yes. Good. Right, so let's get rid of that planning colour there again, just so I can see that everything is in place. Now the difficult thing of this is going to be moving all this operation upstairs without losing money. Uh, we can probably handle losing a day's perfect ops bonus, maybe even two days, because we should be making lots of money from everything else. But uh, we don't want to lose more than that. Now let's just check. What? Four people missed their flights. How is that possible? How is that possible? 5150. Well, that is really annoying, isn't it? I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so, where did that happen? I'm not seeing that. Oh, yeah, there was one there. Oh, bother. <laughs> no. And that was on a, on a small gate as well. Ah. Maybe I do need to set the, uh, the gate closure at 20 minutes for all of them. Just that one passenger. By the look of it. Oh, that is really annoying. Okay, well that 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 is disappointing because, yeah, we we would have earned twenty odd grand, I think, for that. Hey ho, well you you you, you live and learn. Anyway, I think that's where we'll end it for today. I had hoped to get a bit more of this done and actually perhaps start moving people up here, but uh, with the introduction of that new update, I thought it was important to go through that as well, to introduce those features. Um, and yeah, that, actually the car park is looking lovely um, and profitable. Uh, well, it will be. <laughs> it will be. Uh, so yesterday, parking made nearly three grand. Yeah, that, that's nice. So add a few more spaces to that and we'll be well away. Okay, well that's it. I think yeah, we will leave this one here. We will, I hope, in the next episode, complete enough of this upper floor to start moving some passengers up here for some of their flights. Probably for one of these small gates down here would be the best thing to do. We shall see. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, Sim Airport episode. Trying to recreate Bristol Airport. Roughly, very, very roughly. If you have enjoyed this, it'd be great to hear from you. A bit of a like would be lovely. A thumbs up. That's always lovely to see. Even better, though, if you've got any thoughts, suggestions, hints, tips, criticisms, or if there's anything else you want to, to know about the new update or anything else that I might be able to help you get your head around, then please please do let me know. Just drop a note into the comments box below. That would be awesome. And, of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you can do that now, of course. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Sim Airport. Until the next time, bye bye for now. Yeah.